In this video, we'll look at how to handle TAP events in Corona SDK. In the video on creating event listeners, we looked at how to handle events in Corona SDK. If you are new to events, it's a good idea to watch that video before watching this one. Events are the principal way in which you create interactive applications. They are a way of triggering responses in your program. For example, you can turn any display object into an interactive button. This flexibility is one of the great things about Corona SDK. Tap events occur when someone quickly touches and raises their finger off the screen. However, taps are different from touch events and therefore have different properties than touch events. We'll cover touch events more in a separate video. Taps differ from touches in that once the finger moves, the event is canceled, making this type of event perfect for quick touches and especially for scenarios where you need to detect multiple quick taps, like double taps on a specific object or the screen. Tap events have four properties that you can use to respond to these events. Name, num taps, x, and y. In the case of a tap event, event.name will contain the string value tap. Event.numtaps will contain the number of taps on the screen and event.x and event.y will contain the x and y coordinates of where the tap occurred. To handle tap events, we can either attach a function directly to the display object to be tapped or an event listener to the global runtime. Let's look at some code for attaching a function directly to the display object. In this example, we've created a local variable called object and assigned it to a new display object with a passed in value of ball.png. Next, we've assigned a touch function to the object where we pass in the event as the function parameter and then we add an event listener, just as we did in the creating event listeners video. When the event occurs, we print out the number of times the object was tapped by looking at the numTaps property of the passed in event. To assign an event listener to the global runtime, we create a local function called tapListener and pass in the event as a parameter. This time we are attaching the event listener to the global runtime object just as we did in the creating event listeners video. When the tap event occurs, we will print the number of taps in the terminal window. And that's a look at how to handle tap events in Corona SDK. Learn more about working with Corona SDK at coronalabs.com university.